Aloha and welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Marissa Indigo and I am a mystic and founder of Divine DNA Blueprint Mystery School. Uh, my passion is sharing tips and ancient technologies, uh, new light system technologies that come through as well just through living the ascension process here with you all on the journey. And so one of my passions is to kind of share what we're experiencing, what we're seeing in live time in the journey here and just kind of transmit the codes and different protocols and support systems for you at this time to navigate the shift with success and joy and inspiration and empowerment and encouragement at these times because we are all in it together. Uh, for those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Welcome to this beautiful community and I am very excited to share this information with you. Uh, information is light and we are deep in the process together now as we are entering the final quarter of 2022. Oh my gosh. So hello everyone and welcome to October, the first double digit month of the final quarter of 2022. So the first day of October, Saturday, it was just like whammo. <laughs> and it's taken me a few days um, to kind of get stabilized again, get my footing again, receiving everything coming in and where does it land and what is it activating and you know where is it showing responses within the psyche, reactivity, just beautiful. So this is a massive month here, October, of potential breakthroughs for us. There are so many things that we have been you know working on or working towards or uh, wanting to bridge the gap of where we are and where we want to go, who we want to become, the visions that we're seeing, the deepest heart wishes, things like that. And so this is an amazing month of potential breakthroughs, quantum leaps, and receiving a lot of momentum forward into what we call the ideal as real life. So like your dream life, your highest timelines, and the map to get there. So True North, we want to talk about this topic of True North for just a second. This report is loaded with pings of code. So uh, it is advised that you can just sit and relax and receive and listen and see what you see or see where this lands within you. Maybe not so much driving as you listen to this because some of these things get really deep and in the quantum. But we want to talk about true north, about navigation here. And each of us having an entirely unique and individualized experience, which is set forth by our soul. So true north is your soul. We repeat, true north, your navigation, your compass, your guidance, your strategy is your soul. So the way to true north is connecting with and listening to your soul. Each of us is responsible for meeting our authentic self. And so in this month now, we're having a lot of potential timeline shifts and clearing all at the same time. Our connection and our ability to know ourself at energy levels now as an energy being is becoming more and more physically obvious. It is important to remember to check in with yourself often now, really daily ideally, to watch your creations, see which lens of perception you're in, to to view something, which lenses of perception are being used primarily to navigate, and continually check in with yourself and ensure it is the aligned and unified higher perspective always. Our egos may be on the rampage with judgment, frustration, projection, perhaps looping criticism. And this is a lot of the astrology and a lot of the pressure. We are definitely in kind of a pressure cooker type container as everyone is being pushed and kind of pressurized to see even more deeply embedded programming. So we are under pressure, definitely want to honor that experience. And so crankiness and things like that can come up. And so we want to have compassion for ourselves and others too. We want to remember that young children, when they're tired, they throw a temper tantrum sometimes, if they're not being paid attention to, that is. They throw a temper tantrum and act out, and it's their own way of asking for permission or stabilization or a boundaries to kind of be constructed so that they can let go and rest. So you'll see that people are spinning out. There's too much going on. This is too much for me. And they may kind of be in a reactive state and that can be us as well sometimes. And so it's important to, in these moments, not judge ourselves, not berate ourselves for being less than this, you know, totally intangible construct of perfection, but remember and realize that we're on a journey and there are so many different layers of things going on. And we have to look at also our whole life and remember that many of us have never really rested before. We were always on edge in the matrix. So many of us, you know, our organs, our adrenals, 
are stressed. We have a lot of the stress chemicals still in the body like cortisol, adrenaline, right? Because the whole thing is to keep everyone in the system in a state of fight or flight. So we are still in the process of really meeting ourselves and knowing who we are at our prime essence, which is more of a soul level unified beingness, which we maybe haven't been in touch with for the majority of our life. Many of us have never really rested, right? So you want to check in with your nervous system and self-care. We've been blowing the, the self-care trumpet for years, and it's going to become more and more obvious in the physical just how much we're energy beings and just how much certain qualities of energy drain us and certain qualities of energy completely light us up and refuel us and make us feel amazing. You want to consistently check in with yourself and your body and your energy levels and see how are you feeling does it feel good to do this or go there today or do you need to rest today? And you want to work with your body and coming into the body, coming into the nervous system and reprogram it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get on into the transmission. So self-care is the panacea because multidimensionally it's building self-connection and self-awareness and self-intimacy. So a huge part of this journey is really starting to embrace coming into the body. Again, this is something we've been talking about for years and it's to the point now where it's not just something that we can indulge in or kind of look at casually like, oh, that's not really important. That's not really needed. Yes, you're a spiritual being having a human experience and you have this amazing body elemental that is asking for you to merge with it and we're bringing soul into the body. So there's a lot going on here. Self-care is the panacea as it builds a self-connection, self-awareness to be able to commune with and, and listen to your body elemental and what is it asking of you. And thus this is building a self-intimacy where we are beginning to really know who we are and feel comfortable with who we are and all of the pressures of society and things like that start to fall away where we're not allowing ourselves to be molded by wanting to get approval from others and none of that stuff. It's like our authenticity becomes the most important. So the the vastness of this whole energetic can be summarized well in the visual of the Libra scales of balance. And this month and every month, and it's going to continue that we are gifted so much access. And simultaneously, so much is asked of us to continue to clarify ourselves and to qualify everything with our highest light. So this entire journey is a frequency-based journey. So there are frequency fail-safes, if you will, in place. So we have to work in order to gain the access, work on peace, work on self-love, allowing these things. We have to like ourselves and love ourselves and see ourselves as higher self actually sees us. This is where that lens of perception is so important. So at this time, we're going to start to notice when we talk about how obvious things are getting, you're going to start to really notice if you haven't been yet this year, that anything inauthentic, either experienced or observed from outside, like you see something or internally in our own responses to something, our own perhaps reactivity to something will make us feel very separate from our joy or peace. The photonic light and the higher energies are here to show us. They want to show us. They want to support us. They want to guide us to navigate this process because this is now we are fully in the energy-based dimensional kind of universe instead of linear. We have to learn how to trust ourselves. We feel the energetic frequencies of discord more now. Understanding how to differentiate it from harmony is the course. So we want to look at discord and harmony and you could think of noises. So think of like noises that are just really pretty ugly noises like sirens of ambulances or car horns or car alarms. Uh, the, the distortion in heavy metal versus bird singing or the piano being played softly or flute music. Discord, sometimes depending on how your sensory perceptions are activated, you might even be able to smell it. Like it feels like the smell. So it could feel like toxic waste, whereas harmony feels heavenly and expansive and, and lovely and inviting and warm. So you want to start working on, if you haven't been, your multi-sensory sense capabilities. So we say feel, see, because we are feeling our way. This is a feeler-based universe. We are feeling our way around to see, to then be able to navigate and to know. So harmony itself is a word file. So if you think of the word harmony and then you start to feel the harmony and connecting in and just looking at it, the energy. It's a seed packet. So harmony itself, we could summarize this entire report 
in just the word harmony of where is there harmony in your life? Where is there disharmony in your life? What would it feel like for every aspect of your reality from the inside out to be harmonious and beautiful? So harmony is the seed packet to focus on as a pattern to organically allow all to reset in our life in divine perfection. Ah, so let's take a breath here and we're going to do a little, little activation here with this. Welcome to close your eyes and just here we are. We're seeing harmony, seeing it as a beautiful seed, a crystal. And just a little invocation here. This is an example of how we can work with this frequency all the time, all day long, until it becomes ingrained. We invite harmony into all aspects of our being, both personally, professionally, relationally, with self and other too. We embody these feelings of harmony. We invite them into our cells to reset all the codes, all the stories, all the fields of our being. We have trillions of cells in our body each with a receptor site. So that means we have trillions of potential portals which we can activate through intention, invitation, affirmation. So we ask all of the cells to be bathed in the frequencies of harmony and to easily and effortlessly replace anything that is not harmonious now in this now with harmony. And that this be done with kindness and grace and beauty. Regrid, click. Just click it into place. Beautiful. Great job, everyone. Just take some breaths there. And then we'll get back into more of the report. We must remember that we are here in this grand ascension, incension experience to observe, to learn, to explore, and to make informed decisions which honor self and other. Kind of looking at this like mystic visitors in a galactic lab experiment experience of consciousness. We want to make sure to remember now our abilities and our connections and our unified states. We want to remember to alternate emotions with presence as an observer. So we want to study the patterns between harmony and discord as they arise in daily life, whether in the mind or the emotions, external reality to any information coming in. This is to start to support our building a catalog of knowledge to know what is or is not aligned through feeling the quality or the essence of it to determine, is it an appropriate use of energy? Is this a good connection, collaboration, so on. In discord, we may even feel sick or yucky as a very obvious guidance, guiding us away from something and to return to the fields of oneness within, inner knowingness, inner gnosis. This is feeling more. This is feeling also more sensitized, allowing ourselves to realize self-realization that we are becoming more sensitive to living in the new paradigm as an energy being. And we're living in this looping system, like an infinity loop with constant biofeedback. Messages always showing up to stop something or to reroute our course. So we're having these course corrections present all the time. It's like we are navigating the fjords in a little skiff and we need to listen to the waters and watch the waters to know our next move. The element of water comes in asking, inviting you to learn from water as a master teacher and how it will show you a lot, how to support balance and harmony in life from the elemental levels to the cosmic divine levels. And again, with all these gifts comes some elements of tough love because we are graduating again. We're up leveling again. And so there are constant reminders to pay attention from a place of peace within, to hold that observer consciousness and to work for it and whatever it takes to get there in your personal practice. To support you, we also have a video uh, on the channel about how to process and create this space of divine neutrality for you to brush up if desired. This is part of the Entering New Earth uh, Mastery Series. We are seeing an intense magnification, inviting us to be more conscientious of thoughts and words than ever before. The creator beings in action is an access point, an aspect of ourselves as creator beings that's becoming more and more accessible to us. So we must be mindful and heartful of our creations through our thoughts, words, actions, and speech. Karma, we will see, comes heavy to those with ill will or with laziness, engaging in unconscious 
program behaviors like codependence or power over or power under dynamics who restrict or hold negativity. If we are stubborn and still allowing ego to rule, not trusting our best friend, higher self wisdom guidance, then the two by fours are going to continue to be redundant. And this is to whack-a-mole the programming out of us from the unconscious into the conscious and then to be properly released. We're all going through the rewrite process. So at this stage, we can go willingly in a state of presence and awareness or go unconscious and then our egos are going to just drag us in the ascension process. So you want to stay calm and continue steadily at a pace that's appropriate for a marathon with care, with breath. Rushing is based in fear. It doesn't matter how you get there. It's your pace, your soul journey, and you have plenty of room to expand in a natural way for you specifically. We are all learning. This is consciousness school. There's no right or wrong way, but there are easier or harsher routes. And we are here to show routes that are effective and focused. And while we work hard, we also play hard here. And so that's the, you know, the goal of the school and our mission for you all. There is a very powerful invitation to really invoke mastery of ourselves, our experience, to have mindfulness and heartfulness, awareness, presence, mastery of our words and our thoughts now as they are very powerful and we must be sure to have integrity, mindfulness, a linking of higher mind, higher heart, a practice to clear the mind to support this and to connect to higher self, higher power source. God, universe, whatever you like to call it, daily, to ensure we are in authentic self mode. The encouragement is to identify a strong connection to our highest or most unified self and to really dive deeply into what that feels like and to focus on these sensations and start to focus on the frequency of our own song. So each individual has their own stream, their own current that's why in my sessions I call it the soul stream because we're wading in to a stream with another for their development or to support them in seeing more deeply or building solutions. So each of us has our own song and it's really a beautiful time to start to bring the focus inward and start to really be clear on that. What is the frequency of your own soul song? What are the tones? So this is a little bit about the energy of what was being shown immediately, really strongly on the first of the month. And now I'm going to share a little bit about the astrology and the numerology, which is kind of supporting this the symbolism of the codes here. You may be noticing that dualism is showing up massively right now. And this is a part of the Libra energies with the balancing of the scales and also with the numerology itself symbolically presented. Some of the ways that we could kind of look at this dualism is are we at one with soul or separated off with ego? There's also the theme right now, more strongly than ever before, of soul meets body. So no longer are we separated, living just in the mind or living around our head and, and living out of the body. It's time to actually come home into the body. And this is what we've been shown. How to phrase this is landing. Are we landing? And we are, whether we are conscious of it or not, all of us are landing in new earth. And how do we do that? Well, it has to start with the body because the body is earth. And that's going to be a separate podcast, which I'm really excited to get out to you guys. So stay tuned in for that. So soul meets body really being shown that we're no longer separated in the actuality of things. It's just that these are echoes or where we're hanging on or have attachments to programming. So we're only separated when we forget. We're only separated from the divine, from the universe, in the programming of the mind or the emotions, which then projects out to create a scenario. And then it recreates the separation or the sense of separation. And it's like a knee-jerk trauma response. So with this is the invitation to anytime we catch ourselves doing that, no worries, you don't have to beat yourself up for it. Just return to the fields of oneness. And this is part of that wisdom, that duality of being the ocean and the droplet at the same time. The individual and the universal collective symphony. And then finding your equilibrium as a flow state between these. So duality itself is necessary to find unity. We learn and we experience our own individualized recall experience through an electromagnetic matrix system in the physical reality. So duality is part 
part of the physical reality. It's really important to start to embrace this as more of a scientific, formulaic, energetic than emotional or any kind of a dogmatic, reactive response to duality. Anything that we resist persists. So when we start to look at duality as a bad thing, then we are not learning from it. We're getting stuck completely in the Maya again. So duality is what leads to wholeness. Knowing the parts shows us how to build from wholeness. We wouldn't know self if we didn't know not self, right? So duality is part of this trinitized beingness. We don't get stuck in either polarity. We explore them both. We see what they support us in seeing and bringing up and maybe triggering. And then we find our way back to center. So all of this for October is also to prepare us for the Hall of Mirrors of the 11. And that's to come in November. And then we have this huge event happening, which uh, Master Lama Rasaji goes into great deal about on the Circle of Life, if you are familiar with him and his work. And that's the Tai Chi Gong Lama Seri that I'm a part of in my practice. So Master Rasaji has been talking about the Portal of Shiva, which is going to be a very intense activation event from the 1111 to the 1122 of this year. And it's initiating or kickstarting a 33-year cycle. So that's from the Lama Seri. That's their intel. I'll put a link to Rasaji below if you want to sign up for the Tai Chi Gong or anything involved with that. When we have enough light to hold non-resistance for longer and longer periods of time, it all can dissolve much more easily than ever before with grace because we're not attached to it. We're not addicted to it. And we can quantum jump with presence and ease. You will also notice yourself and others physically glowing with the light of consciousness in the sunlight and some people glowing in the dark of night as well. So the owl medicine came through so strongly yesterday when I was assembling all of this information. It came through actually four times throughout the day. So then I knew, okay, yeah, this is definitely meant for us. It actually came and hung out last night and several of them were around the house communicating, which was really great. I haven't seen them all year. So the owl medicine is so vast. And so these are just the key codes of it. So bringing through messages of silent wisdom, keen sight, discernment, strategy, patience, focus, presence, activating more of the clairs, the different abilities, deep listening, silent process of focus, the magician or the alchemist, shining in the dark, abundance, clear vision, whether in light or dark, and also just more indications that we are currently developing higher cognitive abilities of ESP or HSP. Our psychic gifts and abilities are easier to access now. More can be activated in these frequencies that we're in, but we have to meet those frequencies. So this is where we bring in the importance of the clarifying work to align with your higher self every day. And anytime you fall off the wagon, no worries. Just, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that was a good experience of expansion and contraction and just bring yourself on back because for those who are willing to do the work, much is offered. So the key is connection and inner stillness and silence. This is the disciplined Jedi mind training. And so now with the numerology, so the number 10, this is massive. So the number 10 is totally complete. What needs to be surgically removed with precision and focus from our consciousness, our habits, our lifestyle? It's very palpable now what needs to go. There are certain things that we know it's time to let go of and we feel ready and they cannot be swept under the rug for later. And it's intense. The 10 is intense. It's building the next layer on from the nine completion codes and greater cycles. And so it's threefold because we have the 10, the number one, and the zero. So the 10 it's Itself is threefold in its teachings. The 10 itself meaning true total completion throughout our body and life. The big lessons reviewed and learned where we can put down the old baggage finally with gratitude and create space for faster or higher energies to create with. Basically a great way to kind of navigate this is looking at anything that is not loving or kind to self or other. We realize it is necessary now to move forward and we must choose trust over fear. Not to fear change or to fear the unknown because that would be referencing the past and past trauma. So we have to connect daily with our higher self and create this stabilization. And eventually with consistent practice, the stabilization roots within you. So then you are rooted. So to hold on to toxicity in any form burns and poisons us. And you'll see this in people in various forms of decline. The light cannot enter and cannot anchor in a vehicle with density in it. It will not fight with density it will push the density out. So people who are really hanging on and really stubborn with very strong egos, you're going to see a decline until they're ready to trust and to listen. The light of your soul does not care if you have resistance. We are getting mega doses of light now to prepare 
for all of the wormholes of where we're going. And when we hold density within us, it crystallizes in the body as blocked energy and we can become ill. It could be mental illness or just some kind of a physical issue. And the light is coming in so strongly. I mean, we had an X-class flare just yesterday and the sun is not slowing down. And this is why I'm really passionate about sharing space weather and connecting with space weather and learning how to read the charts and read the different frequencies that are coming in so that you can be aware and prepared and understand like, oh, if people are psychologically freaking out, like the people that don't have tools, the people that are just waking up or the people that are still asleep, well, we can start to watch these patterns like, okay, yeah, we're going to get hit with these solar flares and it can activate instability in people because as the magnetics are thinning and pulling apart, the poles are pulling apart, we are electromagnetic beings. So there's a great deal of destabilization happening consistently, which is why we emphasize the, what we call stabilizing. And it has been shown to us that this process of stabilizing is reaffirming who you are, why you're here. And again, who am I? Why am I here? Finding your peace, anchoring in, anchoring into new earth, anchoring into the higher self and feeling that support and that groundedness and that stability, that surety, that confidence, the firmament. This is the firmament, essentially, how we build that architecture within ourselves. And we build it through our psychology and through our emotions and through our focus. This is why we emphasize stabilizing ourselves daily as everything around and external becomes destabilized. When we talk about illness as a wake-up call, all shamans have some kind of a threat to their body or to their livelihood. And this is the biggie level wake-up calls. So like I had these things in childhood to really shake me awake, to get me ready to do all of this this path. Some people are having their health and their healing crises now. So it's important to honor this as a soul process and a soul journey and to work with practitioners who are more holistic and multidimensional in their approach because everything starts in the energy forms first and then crystallizes in the body as it's held over time. So we must clear through the support of our soul and our cells and our DNA. This is where we work with topics like epigenetics and ancestral clearing. And when we do ancestral clearing, we wanna make sure that we're doing this on both the Terran, meaning Gaia, earth and galactic levels. We are going from this moment now through all creation time and space back to original separation from source. So however many millions or billions of years that is for you. And you don't have to go, okay, let me look at yesterday. Let me look at the day before yesterday. You don't have to do it that way. That's how the Nagwals did it. That's how Carlos Castaneda's lineage did it was they turn their head to the left. They sit in the cave, they turn their head to the left and they look at yesterday and they release yesterday and they come back to center. And they turn their head to the left again, they look at the day before yesterday, clear it all, and they come back to center. So that's how the Nagwals would do it. We have been shown we don't have to do that. Just being present, the things will come up to be cleared of their own accord. It's natural. So it's just important that only the aligned is allowed to come. Important to know that and to just trust what's aligned for you. These are intense shamanic rebirth times. We will not at all pretend to (laughs) that this isn't intense. It's really, really intense. So the focus is to remember and focus as spiritual beings, releasing the fear by asking our guidance, connecting with your counsels and your guidance, reaching out to friends and soul tribe for support, and listening to what you are being shown or told by higher self-guidance, and then exploring openly, trusting, curious, heart of a child, exploring what you want the new to be for yourself and for others, expanding your vision to be open to seeing more of what it could be, what it all feels like from a unified place when we imagine the most amazing, wonder-filled dream realities. So this is the process of when we have fear of change and fear of the new, and we're learning how to trust our creating and our co-creator abilities with the universe. This is the process. Focus that you remember, I'm a spiritual being. Bring yourself back into the fields of oneness and start to unravel the fear by feeling it and seeing where is that in the body? Where did that come from? And then working with your guidance, connecting with your counsels, listening and exploring, seeing the visions you've always held and then being willing to see more new ones about what new earth has in store for you, which you were building. So that's the magnanimousness of the 10 itself. Then we have the one. The number one is a form of the beginning from the perspective of a fixed point or a coordinate, a seed, the point of creation. In yoga, we call this the bindu. Making a choice point to then direct energy, to then stream that plasma, that prima materia from formless into a form, streaming it with direction and focus into a form you see and desire to have in physical form. We make a decision to hold 
precision in our laser focus on the path on love, peace, high integrity, beauty, win-win, creation, perfect health, fun, respect, presence, and sacred community, new earth. We take one foot in front of the other on the path and we keep calling in tribe. We open up to receive inspiration. We're asking for action steps. We're taking action and committing to a self-care practice to build our stabilization. We're being supportive of ourselves and others, establishing boundaries as necessary, welcoming all the new from a loving, kind space because this is our creation and we can trust it. We get to write the songs of unity consciousness. We've been singing them. That's what the soul sings. That's the soul song. So how does it come through you? So the one is Genesis, that first spark of energy. It's independent, very independent thinking, entrepreneurial, pioneer. So this is important to remember. It is independent of outside influences. It's new beginnings, pioneering, entrepreneurial stuff perhaps. This is taking the divine masculine in action, leadership, innovation, establishing distinct self-awareness, making informed decisions and focus based upon destiny. So at this point, we're feeling so full of creative energy, we must tune in to see where to place it all, what's aligned. Existing in new visions, projects, businesses, creative endeavors, partnerships, art, one is the I am of humanity. So you see there's so many layers within one layer because when we make a decision to start a creation and start to commit to it, it's going to bring up maybe where we have fear or doubt or any of these things. So it's a consistent clearing process. Everything opens the door to a bunch of other programs for us to see and say, oh no, that's not true anymore. And then rewrite your cells. So now the zero. Oh, the zero. So we're remembering how to function being connected to all. Being connected to everything as energy beings in physical form. The zero is everything. The entire cycles of creation at various rates of spin. This is zero point. This is that prima materia, the base matter to work with, the plasma, divine mother, quantum energy, the infinite ocean, the expanse of potential to create with. And it's important not to get stuck at any point on the ring this of this zero, the circle, and loop unconsciously, but to continue to check in and be aware of any sorts of stagnancy. You're going to know when you're in brackish water. You're going to feel it. It's also important not to get lost in the vastness. So that's where we remember, well, I'm the ocean and the drop. So you see how each of these pieces is so big. That's why the 10 is just so, so big. So being in the physical, we get a big view of both sides of everything, all sides of everything, depending on what dimension it is, all of this stuff. It gets really big and it can be dizzying. So especially when you consider that now light or information or consciousness, not only are we constantly being bombarded with it, all different levels of it too, but it has to be digested through the entire physical body now and all the energy bodies too, not just the mind in a linear equation kind of calculating format. We cannot think our way out of this. We cannot think our way into creation. We must feel into it and use the mind only for calculations from the pure moment without influence of past or future pull. Sore or stiff necks and low back pain show us where the stories are held where we can explore feeling more supported and start to claim that and start to build that. Spirit reminds us that we are the conduits of the light. So we must use our hands, our voices for things. We also have to move the energy. So stretching, walking in nature, light body prana yoga, dance, swimming, tai chi gong, anything to move the energy and connect with it more deeply to really start to embrace and function as an energy being in physical form. So you want to give yourself time and space for self-care daily to start to ride this. This is the ultimate theme park of just living a a present conscious life and starting to really embrace what is it to be an energy being in physical form because we talk about it, but what does it feel like? What does it look like? What's required to hold the highest frequencies that you have, the most connected, the most peaceful, grounded, stable, loving, kind, fun, maybe a little funny, generous, enjoying your own quirkiness, like really owning your song. So you want to give yourself time and space for self-care, even if it's just a few minutes a day. So you could take five minutes to breathe. We have a breathwork video for that. I think it's like three minutes. You could take a short walk outside if you have the energy, or if you really need to rest and lay down and turn off and just try to go to sleep for a little while and take a little cat nap, we have found that 17 minutes, 12 to 17 minutes to lie down and just invite your body to relax and just keep repeating, oh, my feet are so relaxed. My ankles are so relaxed. My calves are so relaxed. And you go up the whole body that way and you repeat each body part three times. Most of the times you're going to get to your hips and you're going to pass out and then you wake up. 
And what happens is you have a, a full reboot happen. So you're finally shutting down your system, which really supports us to integrate all of this light. And then you regenerate while you're powering down, while things are rewriting, while the neurology is rewriting itself, all this electricity, this, we almost see like soldering happening of the neurons and all of these different things. And you regenerate in that process and then you come back online. You're ready to continue on. So with this 10, it's just, it's a theme park. I mean, if you look at it, like we have both really great and also rough experiences here to shake us up. The process of enlightenment is like a theme park. Some rides scare you, but then you remember in some part of you that it's just a ride. So we're really learning zero point. Our linear minds are being destabilized by all the magnetics. And so we have to stabilize ourselves daily to then stabilize reality about us. So we're going to go a little bit deeper on this stabilization point because we're all here in our own unique individuation as lighthouses, as servants of the community, carers, nurturers. We're passionate about what we're here to do. And if we want to be able to serve, we've got to fill our cup. We've got to stabilize ourselves so we're not just spinning out. Because most people, when I work with them, uh, even people who are very seasoned in the ascension journey, they're like, I'm so out of my body, you know, and we're starting to see that. It's like, yeah, it's because we're, we're starting to really see that we're energy beings, but we have to merge everything into the body. So how do we stabilize? If you've never done this process yet, this is where we've been guided to start. Firstly, have you ever done any revocations? any contract revocations yet to clear your life. That would be the place to begin. So the galactic historian Andrew Bartzis has some of the most amazing revocations I've ever seen. They're very thorough and they're putting us in the cosmic courts of equity to completely remove ourselves from any revocations or contracts, anything that was done under duress or unconsciousness with any systems. And that's a very powerful thing to prepare to leave the matrix 3D with is to pull back and do any contract revocations with systems, government, banking systems, I mean, you name it. You want to start with revocations and you can write your own too based on what you have seen as maybe patterns or themes that you're like, oh, I'm ready to really pull out from this and really be done with this. So that's a great place to start. Then once you have a cleared space where you've affirmed and like, declared and commanded your sovereignty and you're clear in your intent then you start to feel clear as a sovereign at soul level from all of these systems you start to become more clear on who you are why you were here so this is how we stabilize is really finding out who we are because there's a lot of static there's a lot of noise there are many different agendas trying to influence us to use our energy so watch out for ideology you're your own master your own teacher. So there's a daily clearing after we do this revocation and we really feel more confident on who we are and why we're here. Then there could be a daily clearing or a releasing or a shedding, whatever you like to see visually from the mental, emotional, physical, and energetic bodies. This is a purging, all to be emptied, to then return yourself to your soul I am presence, which feels full and lovely and loving, and you feel that love light pouring through you. So for example, what we do, we sit here with a candle, and we invite and invoke the sacred Agni, the sacred fire, as we light the candle, and then we pour everything out which feels like shit until it's done. So anything that we're struggling with, anywhere we're judging ourselves or others, uh, inviting the fire into our energy field to purify the field to purify our minds our thoughts our tongue our hearts again with the body clearing the body till we are restored back into the inner sanctum the crystalline temples of our own unique divine energy signature with consistency more releases over time because we have an accumulation so eventually we have emptied out we have purged out a lot when we're just doing it daily as it comes up. And this becomes instantaneous over time. Instead of needing an hour to do this practice and you're crying and there's a lot coming up and out and all this, and then you feel emptied and you feel so great, you feel so alive, you know, over time, it becomes instantaneous. You can just program it. And one of the things that we learned was regrid, click, regrid, click. So you're clicking back into your own divine DNA blueprint. And also to stress that we will know if we're stabilized or not by how we feel. And really the process now is to embrace being feelers again, feeling our bodies, feeling the elemental bodies, feeling the energy bodies, and then feeling our energy and the energy of an environment or what's coming off of another person when we're engaged with them. All of this in tandem with our thoughts, emotions, and words. So we feel in to our alignment. And once emptied, we can reprogram with affirmations. So like we said, there's much offered and to those that much is given, much is required as well. 
This is part of being on the divine path. There is a level of devotion and discipline and maturity here. This is energy mastery. So we have to construct the fields mindfully every day to stabilize, or we risk going autopilot, going unconscious, forgetting, then experiencing bucking currents, karmic timelines. When we go unconscious, the reality gets dropped to the extent which you must be resurfaced into awareness and presence again. So at this time, paying attention, being aware will support us as a compass to navigate around the storms, rough currents, or fog as they present. We have to listen deeply, and sometimes we have to tell the linear mind to shut the fuck up. Just get out of the head and into the body, or switch up what the mind is thinking, because it's just looping something that someone else said that you're now and that's that's not you. So instead of feeling deeply into what is before us to see. The Jedi meant it when they said they could feel the force and they could feel any disturbances within the force because they were disciplined and practiced and they honed their feeler or spidey senses. Tai Chi Gung masters, shamans, medicine people, gatekeepers know this. To then feel our response to any disturbances, whatever that means for you, to feel it. We are feeling it whether we're aware of it or not. It's best to notice this is coming up for me. To feel it like you're in your own contained ocean and you're feeling this floating in your own ocean. To feel your response to whatever this is at cellular and all levels of our being throughout all the bodies. So we're feeling shockwaves of energy constantly, whether we are consciously aware of it or not, as they bounce from sources ranging from the cosmos, all that's happening with the sun, radios, all the media stuff, all the internet stuff, all electricity, plus the electricity that's organic, which is the collective levels of consciousness and unconsciousness of all people here thinking, essentially oceans of thoughts. We live in a quantum soup and it's a lot of information. And there's definitely a, a seriousness to this, but everything is balanced. So while it is serious, <laughs> it's also very playful and fun. And we're getting the sacred Hayoka, the sacred clown medicine coming in of the, the fool and the sage, the wise man and the crazy man, seeing the duality that then has to have pieces of each in order to have wholeness. So we just wish you all an amazing month of expansion and clear sight. Remember to call an owl to support you in seeing and also the lightness of being, the lightness of heart, and that gratitude is the key to soften and continue expansion in the most intensive times. We were made for this. For every one of us that got a body, there were hundreds of thousands of souls lined up behind us that didn't get a body. So we're all blessed. We've been gifted so much and it's time to enjoy the ride and to commit to ourselves, to allow ourselves to receive all of these beautiful gifts. So I thank you so much for being here. I'm leaving links to all sorts of resources below in the description box. I'll see you for the next transmission. Be well. Thank you and aloha.